Strider, Dunedine, Elisar, Aragorn. In this video, I'll be looking into Aragorn's early years and what contributed to the impressive figure we meet in the Fellowship of the Ring. As a growing channel, I'd really appreciate if you would leave me a comment to let me know what you think, any video requests, and of course, remember to like and subscribe. Welcome to Ring Theory. The Aragorn we know from the books and films goes on to become the King of Gondor and play a massive role in the defeat of Sauron's forces in the Third Age. He leads the Fellowship after the fall of Gandalf in the Mines of Moria, fights at the Great Battle of the Hornburg with Rohan's forces, and summons the dead men of Dunharrow to fulfil their oaths and fight in the Battle of Pelennor Fields and save Minas Tirith. He even then leads a force to the Black Gate to act as a final diversion for Frodo and Sam. In this video, I'll be looking into his early years and what contributed to the impressive figure we meet in the Fellowship of the Ring. Aragorn was the only known child of Gilrean and Arathorn. His father, Arathorn, was the 15th chieftain of the Dúnedain, a title given to the heirs of Isildur who led the rangers in the north. As ancestors of Numenor, they typically had elven-like qualities, such as longer lives, the ability to understand the language of birds and beasts, and were known for their tracking and healing abilities. Gilrayan, the wife of Arathorn, gave birth to Aragorn in the year 2931 of the Third Age. Only two years later though, whilst out hunting orcs, his father Arathorn was killed, with an arrow piercing his eye. His mother made the decision to take him to Rivendell, where he was raised until he was a young man. Elrond took on the role as a foster father, and at his mother's request, agreed to keep his lineage a secret. Gilrayan feared he would be killed, like his father, if his true identity as a descendant of Isildur was widely known. Thus, he was named Estelle, which means hope, with his identity being kept even from Aragorn himself. Gilrayan lived with her son, raising him in Rivendell until the age of 20. In the year 2951 of the Third Age, Aragorn's true identity was then revealed to him by Elrond. Around this period, Aragorn also fell in love with Elrond's daughter, Arwen. He was warned by his mother that Elrond would not easily consent to a marriage to a mortal man, and urged him to instead follow in his father's footsteps roaming the wild. Thereafter, Aragorn leaves to assume his proper role as the 16th chieftain of the Dúnedain, leaving the comforts of Rivendell behind to live with the remainder of his people, the rangers in the north. A few years after, Aragorn meets Gandalf the Grey in the year 2956 of the Third Age. They then started a great friendship. It was on Gandalf's advice that Aragorn instructed his rangers to keep watch and guard around the lands known as the Shire. He became known in these lands as Strider, especially in Bree. Over the next 20 years, Aragorn began to make a name for himself in the wider lands of Middle-earth. Aragorn served in the armies of Stuart Ecthelion II of Gondor and King Thengel of Rohan. You may remember a scene in the extended editions of the films where Eowyn realises Aragorn's age after learning that he rode to war with Thengel. He served these lords in disguise, and went by the name of Thorongil. Aragorn at this time had no desire to press his claim as the rightful leader of Gondor and Arnor. He saw himself as only serving the steward. However, Ecthelion's son, Denethor, who we meet in The Return of the King, suspected Aragorn's real identity and was always suspicious of him. During this time, he earned priceless war experience that he would later use in The War of the Ring. One of his most notable acts was leading a small squadron of ships from Gondor to launch an assault on the city of Umbar in the year 2980 of the Third Age. He set many of the Corsair's ships ablaze and personally slayed their lord during the battle. Later on in the same year, 2980 of the Third Age, Aragorn visited Lothlorien, seeing Arwen for the first time in many years. Here Arwen pledged her hand to him in marriage, essentially renouncing her elvish lineage and accepting the gift of men, death. However, a mother is always right, and Gilrayan's warning of Elrond not giving his blessing reared its head. He didn't outright forbid the match, 
but he did the next worst thing in Aragorn's eyes. He said he would withhold his blessing until Aragorn would become the man he was meant to be, becoming the King of Gondor. After this, in the lead up to the main events of the Lord of the Rings taking place, Aragorn travelled widely through Middle Earth, entering the Dwarven Mines of Moria via the East Gate and also journeying to Harad. But Tolkien does not indicate what happened during Aragorn's visits and their purpose. The next major event in his life would be the death of his mother, Gilrayan, in the year 3007 of the Third Age. This was two years before Gandalf started to grow suspicious of the origin of the ring belonging to the hobbit Bilbo Baggins, which later, of course, turned out to be the One Ring, the most sought after object by the Dark Lord Sauron in all of Middle Earth. Setting a guard of rangers on the Shire, Aragorn went at Gandalf's request into Rovanion in search of Gollum the last known possessor of the One Ring. He tracked and searched for the creature for years, finally catching him in the dead marshes near Mordor. Aragorn brought him as captive to Thranduil's halls in Mirkwood, the same halls Bilbo was able to break Thorin's company out of in The Hobbit. After being questioned by Gandalf, Gollum was also able to escape. Thranduil clearly needs to get some more attentive guards. This takes us up to the events of the Fellowship of the Ring, where we first encounter Aragorn in the Prancing Pony. If you can think of anything interesting I've missed, please let me know in the comments below. I'm really going to start to push this channel now, so would appreciate and love to hear your thoughts on potential video recommendations. Thanks for watching Ring Theory. On this channel, I'll be covering anything and everything to do with The Lord of the Rings. If you like what you hear, please remember to like the video and subscribe.